What's up, everybody? Welcome to Dad Life and Gaming Podcast. Back again this week, albeit a little late. Uh, we had some technical up the the bit, and we still are. Uh, so today I'm introducing the podcast. It's your boy Mikey, uh, and again we're joined by our awesome guys. Uh, why don't you guys introduce yourself? What's up, guys? This is Jay Kripners. Uh, John has always here, the host without the bacon on his Big Mac this week. Hey, this is Rob. Joining you guys again as a guest. Definitely oh. good to have you back, Rob. Yep. But yeah, so we're going to get it started here, and as always... I go first, so give me like three seconds to find out where I put my goddamn notebook. Well, shit, while you shit, take your three seconds, I'm just going to put it. you on blast and tell you that I'm able to do the podcast and play Call of Duty. Shut up. <laughs> that ain't even funny. It's a little All funny. Right. Traveling through hyperspace in my dust and crops, boy. Uh, uh, All right. So this uh, week there was tons of anime news. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to refer everyone to go check out a channel on YouTube called Annie News because there's just way too much for me to cover. Um, Ozzy Man Reviews this week, also on YouTube, put out a video. PETA versus Steve Irwin. Pathfinder 2nd Edition is going has a final print release date, August 1st, so be sure to check that out. Uh, as everyone who owns a PS4 may have noticed, there was a huge update that includes Share Factory to your iOS de- Remote Play. Yeah, Remote Play to your iOS device. Um, Critical Role decided to do a fundraiser to get an episode animated. Well, they have o- made over $5 million. So Hopefully that is quite a success. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hopefully... They turn into a series and not just one episode. However, it is one episode. I'm supposing it'll be better than Captain Marvel. And that is your news minute. Oh, you got to stick that knife in there, didn't you? <sighs> oh, and by the way, Rob, that's actually my son in the background yelling. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's nonverbal, so that's how he just talks. Gotcha. Uh, I'd like to point out that not only can I play Call of Duty and do a podcast, my team just won. This All right, guy. you know what? Go to hell. Go to hell. Right? For those who don't know what he's talking about, I cannot play video games and talk at the same time, unless it's call-outs. So, uh, Jay, bite me. Well, why don't we be fair and explain what we had thought to do was play Call of Duty over the podcast so everyone would have something fun to watch. It dawned on us so that maybe we should all get online and see how we play together last night, and we quickly realized that Mike cannot run and gun and talk at the same time. Yeah. So I'm going to be practicing that. However, this week also, we do, I have a disclaimer because a bunch of people who listen to podcasts reached out to me and was like, you know, what's all this hate on EA and some of these other companies? Uh, if you don't know my philosophy, on video games it's i will rarely ever buy a product especially a new ip without trying it word of mouth other stuff and all that before i actually make the purchase i have lost faith in companies when it comes to video games i have lost trust in uh publishers and developers when it comes to games so for all those who have decided, by the way, Snapchat guys, really? Mm-hmm. Come on. If you're going to talk to me, talk to me over Twitter, talk to me on Facebook. That way, at least I ain't got to screen cap it. So, yeah, when it comes to EA, Activision, Ubisoft, uh, recently THQ Nordic because they're idiots. You can only give them so much leeway, especially with like, oh, and Bethesda. 
Sorry, Jay. No, no, disclaimer be damned. I have so much butt hurt at Bethesda, I don't care. I do personally have a vendetta against them. Everybody okay. else I'm cool with. But still, this it's like... Jay, so send the hate mail in the right direction, please. <laughs> with Anthem right now, there's tons of glitches that they ain't fixed <laughs> until the 16th. With... It, I had the, the awesome uh, little uh, joke earlier while we were doing sound tests, is that um, when we are doing sound tests, my... Uh, computer blue screened and i just typed in uh the group chat i was like i didn't even download anthem onto my pc what the <laughs> hell <laughs> exactly so it because of all these just dumb stuff that should have been fixed before a freaking game releases like it's supposed to be and yeah i realize that's not today's culture tough it should be if you're gonna pay 60 dollars for a game that's how a game should be well, is done. Let's let's backtrack a little bit, and let's try to dig in our brain files to the last time we actually had bought a game, uh, like a a new I, IP or a game that we didn't really hear much of beforehand. I've got one at the top of my head. I'm just going to give you guys a little uh, little time to think about it while I talk. The one I bought day one, pre-ordered, picked up, played, loved, got the DLC when it came out was Horizon Zero Dawn. That game was pretty mm -hmm. damn good when it came out. Um, but like what Mike was saying is that there are a few games coming out released that are high expectation and high delivery. I mean, I'm not sure why... Um, Apex came out, it was really good, polished game, and it was well received. Was it because it was like Probably a awesome. mystery drop? But, other than that, like, I, there's hardly any games that I look forward to pre-ordering or digitally download day one. I mean, I was, oh. I was excited for okay, Spider-Man okay. coming out. Yeah, I actually do have a game, and it's technically still not fully released, but the developer is literally talking with people every day like, okay, I need to do this, this, and this, and then this issue pops up. Um, and that's a game on Steam, actually, and it's called Besieged. Or Besiege. I think I've heard of something like that before. Yeah, it's literally you build whatever vehicle, whatever mass destruction device you can to beat certain levels and nice. the developer is in constant communication with the fan base i bought it for 19 bucks and it still isn't fully released yet and it's it's one of those games where it's like i've heard about it it's not fully out but i know all this is going on so i'm going to give it a try and i have not just been disappointed yet do i think you could hurry up with you know making more levels yeah but it's not even out, and I am satisfied with the game. And this is a small developer. Whereas then you look at the AAA developers, and it's like, nah, fuck you. Well, like I was saying, I think another time is that when uh, EA said that they were going to do Anthem, were we already preconditioned of being beaten and like just abused by them that we already knew this game was going to be bad? And then when, um, what was the other game that came out and we're like forgave them? I can't remember. It came out with some bugs and they're like, hey, sorry guys. And then we're like, oh, it's okay. Dude, I'm, I'm trying to think. My brain Can't is so fried, man. I I, <laughs> I I just got home like 30 minutes before we did the the sound check. I took my kid out to a indoor trampoline park, and my brain is just fried. <laughs> what about you, I, Rob? Have you have you bought any new IP games and have been thoroughly satisfied with them lately? Satisfied. I, shut up. It's one of those nights. <laughs> Right. I think we're all kind of feeling it. Um, yeah, you know what? But I'll I'll uh, I'll have to explain it a little bit. 
I've become much easier to please. <laughs> in oh, most here we go. Cards. That sounds so, so wrong. It, right? Is, it, does, is she behind you with the whip right now? We can help. <laughs> so, um, but, it, and that's in some areas. Now, a game that I really enjoyed right away um, when it came out was actually Monster Hunter World. Nice. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and I'll say the people that um, are going to immediately say that, you know, it's super grindy and it's just the same thing over and over again. If you looked at it that way, that's all you were going to see. There's more to the game. So for me, I had a, I played every Monster Hunter ever. I'm a super fan. So um, it's better. It, it's it <laughs> had a different um, play time for me, I think, than a lot of people. Okay. What about you, Jay? Is there anyone besides Fallout seventy six? You know, in, that in terms his of a like, like though. Yeah, that wasn't my like. That was my. They touched me. Let me show you on the doll. <laughs> <laughs> um. Honestly, I'm gonna have to go with the only company that I'm still willing to throw a little money behind when they roll something out is Nintendo. Um, Nintendo generally puts out decent games that aren't buggy as hell. They're willing to hold their games back if it doesn't meet what they want it to meet rather than put out something that's going to disappoint. Which I'll admit, with the Switch, that made a lot of fans upset because new tack rolled out. And they didn't roll out a whole lot of games for it because they were trying to get you know, the new tack, the new engines, and everything running smoothly... And rather than put out a bunch of horse shit that nobody wanted and com would complain about, they would rather just have a little bit of a bear market for a time. And while I will often say Nintendo hates money and this is why they do crap like release a system with no games, I kind of respect it. They would rather have a limited market than just put out crap. Well, and yeah. going back to Mike's little disclaimer, we don't hate certain... EA or any developer per se. Screw you! I hate Bethesda. Well, because you got <laughs> you got really upset with seventy six, but did you like? That's true. Yes, I like other Bethesda games. I'm just really salty about seventy six. Honestly, then... if if I found out Bethesda was gonna say team up with the original company that made Fallout again, the original development team, and put out another like um, New Vegas. I would probably jump all over that. If they would actually work with them again and put something like that out, I'd be all for it. And Obsidian. Then... Mm hmm. And then what? But no, not, it, it, not, it, not all of the I dev, come... team, dev team is with Obsidian anymore either. Exactly. I come from this at a point where it's like I'm getting a little tired of every new game coming out being a game as a service. I'm getting a little tired of it coming out as. No, we're just going to throw a giant day one patch. That's pretty much the same size as the game in terms of file size. Oh, it's a glitch. <laughs> uh, and, and I am it, sick. It's sick getting to the shit. point. Sorry, man. Go ahead. It's getting to the point where it's like there is no point in buying a game or pre-ordering for that matter when you know you're not going to get a full game. The other it's thing I'm really sick to shit of is the game-breaking microtransactions. Yeah, that's uh, I was leaving that in the dust, but that's getting terrible too. When I Everybody can pay for fatalities on Mortal Kombat, that's kind of crap. In defense of that, the only reason they did that in MKX is because everyone was asking for the classic fatalities. Well, um, and they tried no, putting the new ones out. But I meant was, you, oh. you could pay to have a one-button fatality by using coins. Oh yeah, but you can, like I said before, you can unlock that in the crypt. I just remember just by grinding. The, uh, what I was trying to remember that everybody was all upset with EA um, 
issues and their, um, you know, A-Rod getting used to getting screwed over with them. But when they were saying that they're redoing Metro Prime 4, they were okay with it because, you know, it's Nintendo. Well, not just that, but the head of Nintendo actually came out with a press conference type deal, you know, kind of like a mini Nintendo Direct for it, yeah. saying, this does not meet our quality. We are going to delay this game, get a new public or developer on it, and finish it. We are sorry for the inconvenience. And it was literally just an entire apology that he did and explained why. And so that's the thing, like, that... EA right now, I can say that I like their older Battlefield games. I haven't played any of the newer ones. Like, I I loved and played, uh, was it Modern Combat on the Xbox? Hell yeah. And then, was it 1942 that came out? Yep. yep. Those two were good. I loved playing those. Um, Bad Company 2 was amazing. Yeah. Right. Was... But, and then going, what's the other bad one that we're having issues with lately? Let's see, it's Bethesda, Anthem. Bethesda, Fallout. you know, Fallout 4, Skyrim, I've got those. <coughs> I've got Fallout 3, i got Oblivion. I've, I've loved and played the crap out of Morrowind. That's actually, my sister got, um, she, that's where she got her love of Skyrim. Is that she used to, as, uh, like... 10 13 year old she would watch me play uh Marwin on the xbox hmm. so, like... okay in de in defense of myself because i'm like screw bethesda i have literally bought skyrim for every platform it exists on i have owned it at least owned it if i haven't traded it in already or still do for every platform that's playstation 3 xbox 360 nintendo switch pc uh, PlayStation 4, Xbox One. I've owned a copy on every system. So, I mean, I'm not going to say I completely hate them. I'm just not happy with the fact that, as a fan, I gave them loyalty, and in return for my loyalty, I got screwed. Yeah. Well, yeah. And it's just the fact that we're not really trying to pick on these guys, but we're not the only one that's saying something about it. So that that has to say something, too. Exactly. All, I mean, in all fairness, these publishers should be held accountable. We shouldn't just keep handing over our money all happily and go, well, maybe they'll give us a good one. If we start demanding better games from these people, either they listen or they fold as a company. And that's, that's another view I have is you speak with your wallet when it comes to game. If enough people don't buy a game, it ain't going to get another one. You know? If we keep telling them that good enough is good enough, then they're only going to keep making good enough. Exactly. Well, I think, you know, that in light of the recent ones, I think they are starting to learn a little bit, right? Look at look at what EA did. You know, after the microtransaction debacle that they started and people refused to you know, to purchase the game with that, that people didn't even blink an eye. So I think it's it's there, it's present, right? We don't see as much of it in uh at least in some of EA's platforms they've you know reeled reeled it in. So if we keep at what we're doing, right, and demanding and questioning them, it's gonna continue to go in our favor. Yeah. I hear ya and the main reason I wanted to do this disclaimer is because if you, as a father, a mother, a parent, fight back and be like, no, we ain't going to get that game because it's not good, that doesn't quite cover it for kids. If you're like, okay, I know you want this game, but we got to wait till it's fixed. That's just going to infuriate them more, and they're going to question why. And that's where you can go in with your knowledge as a gaming parent and be like, this, this, and this. And if they're old enough, they're going to understand. If they're young enough, they ain't going to stand, but you can kind of dumb it down for them, stuff like that. 
So it's literally as a gaming parent, we kind of got to set examples, especially for some of these terrible games that have come out recently. Sorry, Jay. It's fine. The, okay. There was a time we got to remember, too, back in the day. And yes, I know we're all dinosaurs here. A game came out. It came out on a cartridge or a disc. There was no internet for a patch or an update. So the game was as good or as bad as it was going to be, which put a lot of burden on them. And I'm talking PS2 and maybe the Nintendo Wii and backwards when patches just weren't as big a thing. Um, yeah. To, to put it in perspective, for anyone that's not old enough to remember this, memory cards used to be in megabytes. Not gigs, not terabytes, friggin' megabytes. Remember when and we if you saw had a 16 game. megabyte card, your parents loved you. Yeah, right. Remember when I mean, we saw I... the first gig? That blew my mind. Yeah, right. That, I remember. Like, if you didn't have a PlayStation 2 memory card, you never turned that bitch off. Yeah, it never. stayed on for its entire exactly. life. Exactly. <laughs> and it would weave scorch marks if it was the oldest PlayStation model. It would weave scorch marks under it. But the thing oh, is, yeah, now if man. you do that with a, a PlayStation 4, it wouldn't survive the first week. No. Nope. nope. Especially if you had it'll, a freaking Anthem. It'll installed. beg you to put it into rest <laughs> mode. Sorry. I'm getting on this thing. Lay those zingers down. <laughs> if but, nobody I mean, knows so... what's going on, is that apparently Anthem on PlayStation 4 is bugging it out, making it go to, <laughs> like, shut down the app. And then sometimes it's even making the uh, PlayStation restart and making it load like it turned off the power. And there's oh, been... not just that. It not just that. There's it wouldn't just case, make it restart. Case. It would hard shut down. Yeah. But there's been one case that it actually <laughs> like like bottomized somebody's PlayStation. <laughs> yeah. But we don't know how true that is. Let's go ahead and say that. But it's the fact that, yes, there's bugs in it, but there's bugs on the, the PC version, right, Rob? Yeah. But is it been shutting off the whole system, making you restart your whole computer? No, and even during the beta, it never did anything like that. So it, I can definitely tell that this they intended for this to be a PC and Xbox type of title. And now there, there's an update coming out <laughs> soon that's going to fix that. Which is nice that we have that capability to have updates to fix certain issues within a game. <sighs> but it, it should sh never been a problem in the first place. It shouldn't be its leg. It shouldn't be the leg that which it stands on. Yeah. To be well, successful. See Again, though, and we're dating ourselves as dinosaurs, we also kind of had something that saved our butts, because back in the day, you'd go to Blockbuster, and if there's anyone in the group that doesn't remember Blockbuster, I still I'm sorry. have my membership card in the garage. <laughs> you could go to Blockbuster, and you could rent a game, and then you're like, oh my god, how did Nintendo make this a game? I'm looking at you, Uncle Fester's Adventure. Screw you. <laughs> Nintendo did put out some crappy ones, I'm not going to lie. And you're like, how did Nintendo put this out? Oh, well, I'm only out 250 because I just rented it for a weekend and it sucked. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. Now you can Redbox if you're lucky enough to live near one and it has a title that you're interested in. Well, not only that, yeah. but some of them are a demo. So you can't get certain things. Like, you can't experience certain um, aspects of the game because <laughs> it's like a... A retail right, demo. if it was a two-disc pack, you couldn't. Get, you don't get the second disc. You get disc one and that's it. Yep. Uh, anyway, so I'm, I'm just, just saying a heads we up. come from a perspective of wanting these games whole and ready to play right out of the box, and that's why we're calling out all these companies because they're breaking that model, and we can't understand from a business sense how that's even a good idea. Yeah. So, welcome to our show. <laughs> what are we talking about? We're old. Yeah. Oh, I'm 31. Uh, I'm 30. I'm 33, and out of the three hosts, I'm always the oldest. <laughs> yeah, we saw that and last night me... with your uh, uh, shooter mechanics. Yep. Oh, burn. 
I was getting a tattoo while we were playing, okay? It's impressive. I shot anything. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> they all say sometimes. Uh, but he yeah, got, he, we he, do have... He, he got a pretty big shoulder piece, too. I was going to say, I sent pic- proof in a picture to them that I really was getting a tattoo while we were playing. <laughs> What's your age uh, demographic there, Rob? Uh, I'm 26. Oh, dang. Oh, Christ. <laughs> oh, bitch, I'm still the oldest one. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we do have a great show for everyone tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and well, now go, that the intro's let's go, wrapped up. Let's go back to uh, what we've been playing because we kind of went with the disclaimer first and it kind of leaked onto other things. Uh, yeah. The guys and us last night were playing some Call of Duty Remastered that came out on the PlayStation. Yep. It had some... It was pretty fun. was until we figured out there's loot boxes. <laughs> <laughs> A Call of Duty Modern Warfare with loot box. I No. But it did anyway, have the... the prop point. Prop Hunt was the best part. Yeah, that's what we were like having fun Prop with. Prop Hunt was a lot of fun. We're probably going to play that more. <laughs> uh, myself, though, I tried out the Division 2 beta. And, what, I played two hours and deleted it. Because <laughs> it felt like a reskin to me. Yeah. So, not a true. Um, sequel, just more more of the same in a new box. Well, you had, like, the only thing that I noticed that was a little bit different from the start was, like, you can hire people to go to the main base and do stuff, like a fabric person and stuff like that, but, like, I spent three hours in the game, didn't get any attachments to any weapons I was using, and there was people swimming a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you saw that too, Rob? Yeah. Yeah, it was ever. If you went to uh, like a safe house and there's uh, other players in there, they would be floating in the air, but looks like they're falling, and they're like swimming, quote unquote. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> but don't don't go on uh, Google and type in Division Two swimming, because you'll get, <laughs> uh, you'll get no, you'll get a lot of college shit. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, it, you'll get like <laughs> it look. It's that's all it is. Is like college swimming teams. Oh. Yep. The mic's going. You would want to slow boner real quick. You would want to add uh, Division Two gameplay swimming to get holy wow. Video games. Yeah, there's like NCAA and all that on here. Holy crap! <laughs> I know what Division One swimming looks like. <laughs> High school. Is it? I think, if I remember correctly, Division One is high school. Nope, still college. Oh. He's over there like, yeah. And no, I'm like, that, this question, is actually fascinating. And to answer your, uh, your little theory there, Jay, no, it's still more swimming. <laughs> wow. Uh yeah, I've been and playing like, just mainly at Apex. How you liking that new uh, patch? It's weird. The game, like, the yeah, game changing patch, which I didn't recognize at all. It's not really game changing. Yeah, because like, I, yeah, they nerfed they nerfed uh, the Wombo. They Wombo. upped the R three hundred one. Which patch notes um, are you reading there, buddy? I'm not. I'm going by experience right now. The only thing they did was the wingman and the peacekeeper. Oh. Of course. Then they nerfed them both, didn't they? Yeah. Well, not of much. Of course. Wow. The wingman rate of fire went from 3.1 to 2.6. Uh, the skull piercer went from 2.5 to 2.25. And increase base hip fire spread and decrease the rate at which the hip fire spray uh, spread to decays. Uh, Peacekeeper's shotgun bolt rechamber rate reduced 
Uh, level one is from ten down to seven point five, and when you get level three, it's twenty five to sixteen now. Um, the right. wingman and peacekeeper availability has re- been reduced in all zone tiers. And, I don't believe that for one second because yeah, I can either. still find those sons of bitches everywhere. Well, not the peacekeeper. No, the fun. the wingman too. Yeah, I've been seeing and I use wingman. I yeah. use neither of them. But, I um, use neither of them. But the, but they I increased noticed. the availability of uh, energy weapons and ammo in all uh, zones. So they want you to play the Havoc. <clears throat> yeah, it's not that great of a gun. And no, you know I noticed... I noticed with the Wanbo because I started using that a lot. Um, if you do have a skull piercer attached, it does a lot less damage now. I want you to try something too, uh, there, Mike. Next time you play, yeah. Um, try the triple. Was it the triple take? Mm-hmm. With the um, the choke. Cho- yeah. Have you seen what that does? Okay. Yeah, I used it earlier. And what on the one? Or two, or what kind of optics? Um, I used it on the six times and a three X a god. Try it on a one times. A one times. Yeah, try it. What happens? It it's like a shotgun sniper. Oh. But not only that, but you know how we were discussing Mirage the other week. Mm-hmm. Have you seen the trick for his ultimate? I'm no. So I can't say how. So if you get the ultimate, get onto like a rock. Not like a huge rock, but one like if you strafe left to right, back or forward, you'll kind of fall off. Mm-hmm. And use your ultimate. The clones will jump down and run. Let's do. I actually watched a video of somebody explaining that. I was like, oh, okay. So uh, I want to test it to see if you can, like, jump just in the air and do it. And then I was trying to do the bunny hop crap, which, meh. But yeah, I've been playing just mainly that and I played Modern Warfare with you guys last night. Which, yeah, that was. Kind of a fun, let's go kill some bots thing. Oh, God. What what map was that? Uh, Brig. That you put, like, like, ten bots on? Oh. That one was on, uh, Shipyard. Jeez. Like, you spawn, and there was grenades falling. <laughs> yeah. The bots were so grenade heavy. Ugh. Let's see. What else have we got tonight? Rob, what have you been playing lately? Besides with your car. <laughs> um, yeah, that. Um, been playing some poker with the uh, other admins. And the VR on, still? Uh, uh, nope, that's on regular. Oh. Because it's, uh, it's pretty low spec, so most guys' laptops can play it too. <laughs> And uh, other than that, let's see. Hmm. Um, you know what? I started getting into my RTS phase about once every couple months. I got to just play some old RTSs. So, Rome Total War. Uh, Good one. Oh, oh, yeah. Love it. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, and I play the original one still. I got some crazy, like, 1,300 hours in it. Um. And then, what was the other one? I just played another one that I had a lot of fun with. Um, mm, mm, mm. Oh, um, Empire or Star Wars. Nice. Oh, nice. Like, I remember back when, like, Clinton got into that whole scandal that my friend showed me Age of Empires 2. And that's been like my go to RTS. So much fun. Shit. How do you turn I remember <laughs> way back when in the years ago. Or as a kid just put it, in the old old times. 
and still base Warcraft with 12 discs on the, my computer. Oh, God. oh my god, I remember the size of that case. Remember the thing? You could mm -hmm. beat somebody to death with that thing. I've got, um, and yep. The got... funny thing was, the funny thing was, is I borrowed it from a friend and just made copies. Jeez. So, um... so you're the reason we have those stupid keys and all that right protection now. You can Shut just up. go online. <laughs> Uh, what about you, Jay? What have you been playing, man? Well, first of all, I did manage to find two jobs, if anybody's been following that fun thing. I understand from my training videos that I'm not allowed to specifically mention them, so I'll say one of them Tim Allen would be more than happy to shop at if he was still the tool man. And the other one is your average, there's one in every town kind of store. I would spend, <clears throat> if I like won the lottery, that would be the one place I would like just buy one of everything. Um, yeah. Each store has 40,000 items, unique individual items in inventory, just so you know. Fun fact. That's actually you. a fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> um, but otherwise, I've been playing on the Wii U, Mario Kart with Heather, and Breath of the Wild. I have been playing Call of Duty with you guys. Yay. And otherwise, I really haven't had a lot of time to be hopping on and doing a lot of gaming because, like I said, I was out looking for a job so I can, you know, feed my family, keep a roof, all that fun jazz. Just been living the but dream. hopefully, yeah, right? Hopefully, now that I've got those two locked down, once I get a uh, schedule that makes some sense and some stability, I'll be able to get more of a gaming routine going again. Eh, I wouldn't worry about it. It's overrated. <laughs> Well, with what's coming out lately, it is. <laughs> I just, I just, I just got on to look at the Twitch. Oh, the first thing that happens is it switches over to an ad for Anthem. <laughs> is it the one that's the uh, the like the remix of the old song, Crazy Train? Crazy Train. Yep. Yeah. They did. Uh, a, they they blew a lot of money on that production. Well, they ain't going to make none of it back. Microtransactions. Everybody's got to get that. Yeah. I don't know. He might be buying new PlayStations for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I didn't buy Anthem, but it broke my PlayStation because it heard about it, got scared, and committed suicide. <laughs> R.I.P. Press after pay respects. Ugh. No, uh, I actually, I'm going to be moving on to the next topic because holy crap. So I joined Rob's group twice now. Once because the original one got shut down for some odd reason. Uh, but I have seen in all my dad groups just so many freaking birthdays for their kids. And it's like, how in the hell? Is everyone screwing during summer? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, but no. I, I, I thought just quick, you know, a little thing. What are some gamer dad gifts that you get for your kids? Like, it's a question I want to post to you guys. Um, like for the I birthday? Know. Yeah, for the birthday. Like, let's go one to teen. How do you start off kids with gaming? For their birthday. I've got, gotten my kids uh, Mario plushies. Um, and that's, that's a good one. That's my two daughters, and uh, they actually love them and carried them around for, God, like a year and a half. They wouldn't go anywhere without them. Well, I believe everybody in this whole podcast knows what I get my son. Yeah, Rocket League. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Have we talked about Rocket League? You don't remember it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no, that's my son. Like anything, cars, Hot Wheels, or Rocket League. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. like uh, Target just came out with those mystery boxes that you can customize cars. Mm -hmm. And like I bought a display of it, so like twelve of the. 
of the mystery boxes. And he's only missing two cars now of the whole set. Sweet. And then um, later on, like a, a week or so later, we went to GameStop and they had the clearance uh, for their uh, clearance. So it was like half off clearance. And they had the keychains of the Rocket League stuff that you can hit a button and the boost lights up. And then they had the mystery uh, uh, pullback cars. So, like, I got those, but they're sitting in my closet for when he has a good week of school. Right. If you guys want really a really good kid-friendly present, anything Kingdom Hearts is honestly a good idea because it, it fits into gaming with Final Fantasy and, of course, the Kingdom Hearts games. You've got Disney, and it all goes back and forth. So it falls into a lot of categories, especially for younger kids. Um, my stepdaughter is obsessed with Disney princesses, so of course, you know, Kingdom Hearts, the whole point is to rescue the princesses. So I've, I've given her princesses from that, stuff like that, and it's a really easy one that fits a bunch of age groups. Yeah, we did, um, for my son, like, a lot of the Disney games, so Cars, and then, um... He played some Hot Wheels on the computer a little bit. And he even played around a little bit on my Xbox on uh, on Forza. So there was a few different options. But I think right now, the most gaming they do is going to be a um, little learning application that they have on a tablet. Try uh, ABC Mouse. That's pretty nice. Yep, that's what it is. Your putt putt's mini adventure. There you go. Um, I'll give you. <laughs> I give each of you guys one guess of what the first game my son played that was on a console. And I've said it before. Wow. I'm not sure anybody's remembered. Hmm. Mm. What could it be? Fortnite. No, just kidding. Oh, dude. No, <laughs> no he he knows not to play that game ever. Yeah, we all know it's Rocket League, dude. No, it's not. Oh, what was it then? Minecraft. No. Hell no. Damn. <laughs> Jay, you can run. Such a new Hellblade. What's your guess, Jay? <laughs> the game that he would have played on a console. Retro or current? It would be retro. Was it Mario Brothers? No. Mike knows the answer as soon as I say this. It is not going to be at Evo. Oh, Marvel. No. Super Smash Bros. Melee. Oh. oh. I, I don't care about that game, so. Now, that's, that was the first game my son ever got into and loved and played. And he was like two and a half when he started playing it. And at that time, he was like a level two computer. And now he's like a level nine. Nice. <laughs> but yeah gaming gifts to all the dads out there and feel free to share this advice are very very just widespread if you want to get your kids in the gaming and do it on their birthday it's very easy to do get one of the, they're hard. the classics that come out I was just going to say that they're getting hard to find again but the NES and SNES classics Fantastic. It brings back some nostalgia. You can actually let them see that games used to be hard and cruel and a challenge. Yep, make, make them play Ninja stay Gaiden. The, stay away from the PlayStation Classic. That thing is a dumpster fire. Yeah, I think it's on it's sale again. Garbage. $39 at Target. Really? It's 59 at Walmart. <coughs> it's here in New York. If you really want to have a sit-down talk with your kids, let them play God of War. <laughs> <laughs> and just refer to them as boy the rest of the day. No, I'm talking about the original God of War. No, you gotta make them do the new one. No, 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 no. You gotta have like sex in there too. Oh, 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 oh. Yep, yep. Okay. Speaking also, of which, I want to bring this up. I want to bring quick discussion. I saw this earlier. I think it was on the the boat. Uh, group, what game would you want to see get remastered or re? 
That, mm. oh, should we narrow it down to remastered or like uh, what they did with like God of War? Just full overhaul? Yeah. Like what they did with Resident Evil 2? Should it be just remaster or like a reskin? At, at this point, is there really a difference? If you're going back far enough, it would have to be a total overhaul. Here's, here's where I would say I would draw the line, and I'm not sure what that this falls into, so somebody define it for me. <clears throat> My line is I don't care if you want to kind of like, you know, change the story or whatnot to an extent. Um, my biggest pet peeve is what Total War did with their oh. newer RTS controls and layout. Their original controls and layout were perfection. Medieval uh, Total War 2, awesome. Rome Total War, awesome. Uh, even the first Shogun was good. And then they just fucking tanked it at Rome Total War 2 ruined everything. The mechanics were just terrible. Uh. My remaster, and they really would have to make the thing from the ground up, I would love to see the original Legend of Zelda remade using the same graphics and engine as um, the most current, Breath of the Wild. I think that would be an awesome story to retell. I think it would look amazing with the new graphics. And it honestly falls into a different timeline. As long as you beat it, it falls into a different timeline than Breath of the Wild does. So it would be an interesting way of being able to look at the legends in the game. I spoke to the court. All right, hold on, because I'm actually going to grab the one I want remade. I can give mine real quick. And I'm not sure how many people have played this before, but Nightmare Creature. I guarantee you the one who have played mine are few and far between, but I have to actually go into my man cave for it, which is in the basement. But, <sighs> has anybody played Nightmare Creatures before? you just admit that you really are a gremlin? Uh-uh. Okay. You know what? Go to bed. It's, <laughs> it's basically like a Resident Evil horror uh, game. <clears throat> all right hold on a minute because i'm actually gonna send you a picture john john you know what game i think you would actually dig if you have a ds what's that there was a game and they, it was on the original ds and they re-released it with better graphics and controls for the 3ds it's called dementium the ward and it is a survival Ooh. horror you're locked in a mental institution. You have to find clues to find your way out. There's horrific things stalking you. You have a flashlight. No. But the battery only works for so no. long, then it no. shuts off and you have to wait. No, this is like Dark Souls uh, with, uh, like, creatures. Like, you're like Van Helsink with Dark Souls. Nice. So the whole like like that one game that you have to take pictures of ghosts if not they'll kill you. No, screw that game. <laughs> no, this one you don't have to take pictures of stuff. There's just horrible stuff stalking you. It's no, just screw, a total screw, no, screw no, with your head no, mind no. fuck. No, I'm good. So my game that I want remade is Genji Dawn of the Samurai. And I sent you a picture of it in the Discord. Yes. I have heard of your game, but I do not believe I've played it. It was one of my first ever games that really just hit home with me. The At the time when I originally played it, and mind you, this is a PS2 game. I'm trying to see a date here. Yeah, hey, I can pull it up for you. Uh, just keep on talking. No, you know what? See. I have played that game. Yeah, it's so good. But at the time, hey. it was like cutting edge and everything it's so smooth had quick time events it came bundled with the first ps2 i ever bought was it let's Dawn see of the samurai right yep uh june 28 2005 huh. yeah and that's got, how old this got game. A 74 on metacritic well the second one uh genji 2 i forget what it's called 
but I also have it in the basement. I didn't grab it because I don't have the actual art for it. Um, I actually didn't get to play because my brother bought it for me, but I just That's didn't have time to put it in. Days of Blade, is it? It might be. Okay. Oh, you know what? I'm going to change my answer. <laughs> it wouldn't be an RTS. Anybody remember Zone of Enders? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yes, my favorite was the uh, yeah. the Game Boy Advance version, which was Zone of en- Zone of Enders: The Fist of Mars, and it was it actually was a strategy game, but it was good. Hold up, so let's just talk about that cinematic music, <laughs> right? All right, I would hit pause. I don't know if you guys remember that tune that would play. I would hit pause and turn up the TV and listen to that shit, so I can fucking take a nap. Love that music. So I want to expand on the question. Assuming that it would be done correctly and not another Super Mario Brothers, what video game franchise would you want to see turned into a movie if they did it right? Ooh. KOTOR. (laughs) Knights of the Old Republic. Make it happen. Just read the books. I did. Look, <laughs> I, you don't get it, all right? It needs to happen. It does, Swotor, but Disney disavowed the books. Swotor made a series of cinematics that were so good. So good. All I'm saying is take those same exact people and fill in the gaps. <laughs> Give me a whole... Right. Two hours and I'm good. I got my answer for this one, and it's not going to be on anyone's radar. But Leisure Suit Larry <laughs> for I a movie. I love that game. For a movie, can you imagine that? Are you even old enough to have played the original Leisure Suit Larry? Of course, doesn't mean I did it legally, but yes. <laughs> <clears throat> That's how I learned about certain oh, kids out. All you kids out there, I'm telling you, you missed the golden area of LimeWire. To, oh, to play Leisure Suit Larry, kids, you actually had to answer questions about general trivia that you should know if you were 18 at the time the game came out. Now, I'm going to be honest, not even I was 18 when the game came out, and I'm the oldest in the group. And Google so this was wasn't how... around to help you. Yes, Google was not around. You actually had to find a search engine or a chat group and ask people and ask stuff to be like, well... All right, what is this? And I actually had to hunt down the answers just to play a freaking computer game. Because it it was wrong, it would tell you, sorry, you're too young, you're not allowed to play. We talk about how dangerous that shit was. All these kids going on to fucking chat rooms. Dude, that was like the place to just go, hey, uh, was it like white male 18 Florida or some shit like that? Yeah. (laughs) That was the first thing he always said. That was a common question. Age, sex, location, baby. Yeah. And by the way, back in the day, they used to tell you, don't talk to strangers on the internet, don't meet up with people from the internet, and definitely don't do anything else. Now what do we do? We order a stranger off the internet and get in their freaking car and go for a ride. Yep. And it's still not good enough, though. <laughs> uh... Nope. I haven't Any actually had any bad Uber, Uber experiences. Uh, we don't have Uber up here. <laughs> you don't have sidewalks up there. Who the hell are you kidding? You, you gotta call. I do too. What have is a that sidewalk? old movie? What is that old movie that they all on the wagon? <laughs> oh. There's so many. The hillbillies. The yeah. Oh, Be- uh, Beverly, Beverly hillbillies. hillbillies. Yeah, that's what you have to call <laughs> to get around town. <laughs> <laughs> And I love that. I do have a sidewalk. Now we have sidewalks. We have a sidewalk. Dude, like here in Jacksonville, you can either walk, take any, you got Lyft, Uber, or you mm-hmm. take a taxi, or you can get on a bus. For like $15, you can go from Jacksonville to St. Augustine. We have buses. Like city buses? School buses don't count. 
No, it's uh, they come all the way from another town, but we got buses. <laughs> the Greyhound that meanders on through. Yeah, everyone forgets exists. They come it's from another you, town, but it's got handles on the outside, so you can just grab <laughs> on. All right, all right. Enough about how redneck I am, y'all. <laughs> oh. We can pick on Pennsylvania for a while. That's always fun. (laughs) Better than West Virginia. Uh, Going back to risky games, though. (laughs) DOA 6. DOA 6. The game where titty physics should be a thing, but they ain't no more. Uh, You're not even scratching the surface, are you? Oh. Hey, hey. I'm going to put it. They were not titty physics. They were jiggle physics. And yes, it's a real fucking thing. I'm going to put it out there. With DOA 5, you could literally hold your PlayStation wait, 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 controller. Wait. I'm going to beat your ass. Mm-hmm. Your I'm going to send cold your way. But um, you could hold your PlayStation controller and not even press a button, but just go up and down with it in your arms and the titties would move. You're missing the biggest point, though. What? The Game Pass. Uh, and it's nothing new. I don't know why people are freaking out. Have you seen... If you go... Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Whoa. If you go look on DOA 5, they have the same thing. What? DOA 4 even had it. Yeah. What did it include? Same thing? Every freaking thing. Up what? to 300 costumes? Or no. The first pass was a hundred and some odd costumes, and I think the character, if they had a character, I don't remember. But yeah, it was just mountains and mountains of costumes. And, and maybe how, a stage. And how much did it cost? Uh, I think my friend bought it at 89 bucks on sale. What the? Otherwise, it was like 92 Yeah, that's what this Yeah, it's is. nothing new. It's nothing new. Why are y'all freaking out? I'm going to be they honest, I never saw the appeal. Uh, really, it's just people want to make their waifu pretty. No, I meant I never saw the appeal of the game. I. Oh, uh, volleyball it's pretty. Movies, volleyball cartoon okay, movies don't do it for me when I actually have a real set that live with me. No, it, it's the same premise as, uh, what's that other fighting game? Virtual Fighter. Where you have the counter mechanic and it's just a three button fight or four button fighter, you know, stuff like that. It's a simplified 3D fighter instead of like Tekken. Okay. It does have a it does have a huge fan base. This DOA six definitely got rid of a few people, but it, it yeah, it's in the same line as Virtua Fighter, which I doubt we're ever gonna get another one of. See, to me though, the DOA fan base comes across as the same guys. That buy the pillows at the anime convention. Nobody no, I you, to hang you, out wa- with. you want to see those guys. Do a quick Google search right now for Arcana Hartwell Max. I'm kind of scared. Yeah, don't believe you anything. You be. haven't played Dark. <laughs> you haven't played freaking Bloodborne with Mike, so don't believe anything he says. Oh, I was saying, <laughs> li- listeners, listeners, if Mike tells you to Google search something, don't do it because he is a sadistic son of a bitch and has a lot of time in his hands. He gets bored and thinks up evil crap. <laughs> yeah, a Connor Hart three love max. Oh, I gotta find it for um, viewers now. But I'm just uh, saying, actually, I, on my channel there should be some. So I love anime too, but I've never thought to myself, "Gee, I should buy an anime pillow to hump." And the God. DOA fan base sounds almost exactly the same as those guys. No, 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 no. There's even freaking uh, webcam pillows now. Oh yeah. Um. Okay, that's yeah. a rabbit hole that I don't want to go down. What did I yeah. just come back to? Arcana Heart. <laughs> Do me a favor, Rob, because you'll trust me. Arcana uh... Heart 3 was Matt. <laughs> you'll learn quickly no, why no, no. you shouldn't, Rob. Rob, before you look up anything, I'm going to send you a link on Facebook. You watch this, and then you let me know. Whoa. Uh, Arcana Heart 3 Love Max is an anime fighter where... It's awesome. I mean, it's one of the better f- anime fighting games out there. Okay. Right. Against my better judgment, I'm going to do this. 
Yes. All right. There you go, Rob. I sent you something on Facebook. You watch that, and you tell me if you should believe anything that uh, Mike says to you anymore. Oh, volume warning, because he messed up the audio. So what is this shenanigans? Yeah, I'll see if I can find... Boop. My channel. Because I'm pretty sure I played Arcana Heart. Anyways, back to DOA. I... It's nothing new. It's $92, and it's the same it's ever been. But why? Like, is the costume... Really because, do it? you want to go buy a costume for $2 a pop each time? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Just out of curiosity, am I looking for Rule 32 pictures, or am I looking for something serious about this game? Hey, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure where Mike's sending me here. Just, tread like just gameplay. Just gameplay. First thing that came up, was, just, just came up was actually Wikipedia, so I want videos. Yeah. Go to YouTube. Arcana, 3, Arcana Heart 3 Love Max. Okay. I gave up anime a long time ago so i wouldn't be able to help you there actually I'll just, oh I'll just that's start private you with the kid anyways <laughs> <laughs> jay you want to talk about critters yeah if anybody remembers the uh movie from the 80s, 90s, somewhere around there. Uh, the little alien creatures that come to Earth and are just evil and sadistic. And it, it was quite funny. And it was that schlock brand of horror, which was just a lot of fun. And I guess they're thinking about giving them a TV series or it's in production at the moment. I just happened to catch on to a clip of it, you know, a little news snippet the other day. And it said that they're getting ready to put it in production. Which would be actually kind of cool. It would make an interesting series. But I'm kind of feeling like I might be the only person that even remembers this series. Oh, no. I watched all f two or three of them. Oh, uh, yeah. I think that's about right. There were like two or three. I mean, it wasn't as prevalent as Gremlins or Killer Clowns from Outer Space. But, yeah, it was there. It was fun. It, it, it was one of those stupid movies where if... You watched the first one. It was pure 80s exploitation. It was. It, and it was it was the kind of camp, campy movie that you took a tent to. It was that much camp. Yeah. But it was fun. But really, that's all that needs to be said about it. It was a fun little campy movie. Yeah, and I wouldn't mind. That was just my thing. I was excited. Something from my childhood is going to be a TV show. Um, I'll be honest. Things from my childhood being made into TV shows lately have just made me sad. So they're probably <laughs> going to screw it up. But I'm looking at you, Teen Titans Go. You should just go away. Oh, man. I still, need to, I, need, I still need to catch up on the Young Justice. It's on Netflix, dude. No, I thought they, it, no, no, it's behind no. the DC paywall now. Yeah. Oh, is it? It's yep. wonderful. That's why they I, finally started making new episodes and then slapped it behind their paywall. Yep. That's well, funny. I just saw the news of the Disney one, so. Okay. Yeah, they're putting everything there. Everything. Yeah, it's even cheaper than Netflix. Well, Netflix just in increase their prices <laughs> well also hey. there's been something that they can't um use the same actors or characters from the netflix series huh marvel stuff that sucks because jessica jones and all that was amazing they're still going to air season three for jessica jones punisher was like the whole why ground. can't they have that stuff they own it all yeah, but they can't. They, there was like a contract. Is it a time frame? 
Yeah, it's like it's probably two, probably a conflict of interest. Oh shit! We yeah, gotta wait two years for more Punisher. Fuck off. Yeah, the, the other two chumps on this podcast I haven't even watched it. Oh. I watched the first season. You shithead. Scrubs. I like that show. Mm-hmm. I'm about to go. I'm about to watch uh, rewatch season one and season two again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that DOA six stuff—it's nothing new. It's been happening for years. You're just how like how big is is it going to be at Evo one year or no? Uh, hold on, because I actually have the listing for Evo. I do think DOA is at Evo. So one second, downloads. No, it's going to be in Facebook. Of course you fucking are. There it is. Uh, It's not a mainline game. Yeah. But I can guarantee you it's going to be there. Yeah, mainline for Evo is Undernight and Birth EX Late. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, which is why Melee isn't there because they put the money behind this. Yeah. Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Yeah. Blaze, Blaze Blue Cross Tag, Tekken 7, Street Fighter A, Soul, Soul Calibur 6, 6 yep. Mortal Kombat 11, and Samurai Showdown. Which is like the one, like the sleeper that nobody knew. Oh, uh, it's getting remade. Yeah, I've seen Sonic Fox been practicing too. Mm-hmm. For the Samurai <clears throat> one. Not to change the topic, but real quick, you guys were only one level away from being able to create classes last night. Oh, oh I already am. I'm there. Yeah, you went to like I wrapped level, that up earlier. You went to like level like ten, didn't you? No, no. I was level three last night when we stopped. I just like went on earlier and capped it out. Okay, because like I had to mute your Facebook because like the first like fifteen posts on my Facebook were about you. I'm like, yeah, let's mute him for thirty days. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know, because I think I just accepted your friend request. So I was like, yeah, let's oh. like, show you all of Mike's bits that you missed because you weren't his friend. No, I, I mean, feel you free. You a lot in my feed, but I just become a smart ass and comment on <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you guys don't want to see my shit, just unfollow me. If I need to talk to you, I'll tag you in something. Yeah. It's no biggie. Like the other day when I told you that Alyssa shouldn't let you play with knives. Yeah. Shut up. Carrot fingers. <laughs> Uh-oh. And Something somehow you blame that the is cat. The, the cat jumped on me. That's why I cut my finger. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's the cat's fault. I blame um, stuff on my cat all the time, too. Cat stole my remote. Yeah. We yeah, all know yeah, the cat okay. didn't steal my, re- my remote. My dumbass put it somewhere and forgot where it was, but I still blame the cat. Well, something I want to talk about real quick that... I, there's a little update to a story we covered two weeks ago, but it just seems like people are like looking for a reason or wanting something more than what should be, and it's back to THQ Nordic. Mm. They're like, yeah, the guy came up, it's like, yeah, we made a mistake, somebody was supposed to take care of the bad stuff, but didn't, so um, he, he apologized and said that moving forward nothing like this was going to happen again but there's like people still like you should have done your homework you need to uh, quit your job you get fired and i think it's a little excessive to be honest this is not the first time somebody screwed the pooch on the internet um i'll cite back we were talking about this and it happened on twitch um the guy that got caught doing something inappropriate because he didn't realize he had hit the uh, start record button and thought he was still like 30 minutes from going live and everybody got a free show that definitely was not um, appropriate for Twitch. Accidents and mistakes happen. People are human. I mean, yeah, they could have done their homework. Yeah, they should have thought a little harder about where they did the interview. But for crying out loud, it's not like they did it maliciously. They just didn't think real hard. Well, apparently somebody came up and was like, hey, y'all should do this, you know, at this place. Don't worry, I'll take care of all the bad stuff. And Yeah, thanks, Mark. Yeah, <laughs> whoever this Mark is. That's literally it. That's all he is known as. Mark. Mark. Which, 
let's be honest, Mark is currently right now probably the king of the trolls. Yeah. Because right. that was a pretty good troll. Yeah, probably some like, my theory is, like, somebody popped in the office, is like, hey, we need to do this here, and I'll take care of the bad stuff, and he just walked out. Like, it was just a random person <laughs> that walked in the office that happened to get, like, a bad, a visitor's badge. Some guy just maliciously going around businesses, fucking up deals. Yeah. Trying to get you to open yours. What Would you be surprised? <laughs> no, not in the slightest. Internet trolls have a lot of time on their hands. Yeah. And they do some weird crap. They don't have to pay <laughs> rent because they live in the grandma's basement. <laughs> Hey, screw you. I lived in my grandma's attic, not her basement. Fish heads or uh, chicken liver? <laughs> Neither. <laughs> I was raised by my grandmother, so anytime someone brings up grandma's basement, I'm like, no, it was the attic. Well, here in Florida, you'll probably, like, turn into jerky how humid and right? dry it is up there. Jeez. Oh, I had an air conditioner in my room, believe me. That's fine. I'm fine. That's, that's always a good thing to find out is that somebody calls you for work and you say, hey, go up the attic and get this. And it's like, this thing's been barbecuing up there. <laughs> Are you missing any cats? I found three. They're, they're about as big as cats. Let me let you know about that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, oh, I mean, going back the to night. the topic at hand is like, I don't like, what would be enough for people? Like, this person probably has a family. He's, you know, I don't think he needs all this money to survive, but, you know, cutting out him and might be a little difficult to uh, get a job afterwards because of the whole, like, 8chan stuff. But does that... Like, it, all to, for... to, be, to be out there, some of the rage about this in the 8chan... Is it is one of those unregulated corners of the internet? Yeah, and that's why like it gets delisted from Google in search results. That's how bad. I was gonna it is. say it's barely one step above the black web. Yeah, like if you go search for HN, it'll pull up. But if you try like search for a topic, it will not pull up an HN topic thread. You know, but again. Somebody screwed up and didn't know what they were doing. He said he was sorry. They admitted, you know, hey, we, we really screwed this up and we really apologize. I, I can't see what more you want. Is it going to undo the interview for him to fall on his sword and say, okay, I'll quit? Well, I, think, I think people need to let it be. You know, the, the company is going to do what they think is best at the end of the day. And honestly, I hope they stand behind whoever made the decision. You know what I mean? Um, be it bad information or not, they need to show support for their employees. Because if you don't, that's how you get people making shitty products. Well, now yeah, that's how you soul. Uh, that's how low morale starts within a company is if you don't yes. behind stand behind for one little mistake and as much as the internet may think this is like a huge outrage it really ain't no exactly people need to calm down and it's not worth this person's career it's not worth what it could potentially do to their co-workers you know because they're probably thinking the same thing like wow that that really sucks you know but it's not the end of the world yeah Exactly. Oh, going so, back hey, to so... a topic that we were talking about earlier there, Jay. Yeah. How you, how you want, uh, what game you should want remake. And that's a, basically a sleeper is what I'm currently playing right now, which is Burnout. Yeah. That needs to be, That'd be like a lot of fun. Another. You're talking the old Burnout games? Well, I grew up on Burnout Revenge. I think was on Xbox. Love that because you can put your Xbox music into the game. But yeah. Right, but right now I'm pl I'm playing the two dollar Burnout Par Paradise I bought. What was the one on PS2 and it had the destruction mode where the whole point of the Paradise. game was to wreck as Paradise. much shit as you possibly could in fifteen That's, seconds. That was in uh, Paradise and in uh, Revenge. Yeah. 
I loved that mode. That was a lot of fun. But in pa Paradise was like their first time doing open world. Like, Holy crap. Um, okay, I just thought of this. Go ahead. Me and my best friend honestly spent a lot of Friday nights sitting in, at his house playing just Burnout constantly. It was one of our favorite games. And I mean, this guy's still my best friend to this day. And a lot of awesome weekends were spent just freaking dicking around on Burnout. It was a lot of fun, and it really should have some uh, modern console releases. Well, you know what the big issue about that is, right? Mm -mm. Who owns Burnout? Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Are you kidding me? See, look at that. We just sang the praises of an EA game. I want to stop hearing y'all whine that we hate EA. Well, I'm playing it right now for the the podcast. No, I was just thinking, you guys remember Skate? Yeah, that's another EA game. Yep. That was a good one. And the meat grinder mode? <laughs> Didn't EA own Pro Skater too? The Tony Hawk series? Yep. Or was that even so? I can't remember now. I was going to say, that was another one that, that I played the crap out of for years. That was the time frame, though. They had just nothing but some really solid titles across the board. That's when all the good battlefields were coming out, too. And Tony Hawk was another one that, unless you got it on the um, Nintendo 64... Activision. Activision. Activision owns Tony Hawk series. You could pump your own tracks into the Tony Hawk series, too, unless you had it on the Nintendo, which didn't allow for playing music. Holy that was another one you could import your own music to and skate to your own music, which was just awesome. 60 car crash so far. Yeah, I'm watching <laughs> this. 70 car crash. Ridiculous. Oh, uh, you know what? I'm not, I don't want a remake of, but I'm waiting for this one to be released. Uh, Rockstar, <laughs> cough, some Midnight Club. Where the hell is my oh, Midnight God, I... Club? I haven't played Midnight Club since the original Xbox. Actually, I got two more for you guys, and they're actually kind of the same type, but I remember playing the crap out of the one of them in arcade, and God forbid I hate it because you can never like beat the shit out of the computer. And the other one, I, I loved playing the game with my stepfather because it was so fun. The first one being NFL Blitz. Because, like, once you tackle somebody, you just, like, just destroy them on the ground with the whole team. You just smear the career mode on them. <laughs> right. The, the second one was NFL Street. That was a fun game. Like, it was, like, a, like really good done. It's basically, like, a, think of, a, was it NBA Jam? I think it was. Yeah. But it's football. But it's, like, more like... Uh, Def Jam, boxing, whatever it was called. Oh, Deathmatch? Yeah, but it was like more like you're playing football, but you're, it's more stylish. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I was trying to do a comparison for you. But it, it was fun. It was real fun. You got to make your own team, and you just competed. And it was real fun because, like, you can have one, like, stock guy and he'll basically just tuck the ball and he'll run and like he'll just mow over people or that like, you can just <laughs> do like a triple flip over somebody's head you know what i'm not excited to see and this ties into this mm -hmm. that new fucking sonic movie <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> what is it i put in the the uh not, not my, my sonic. sonic yep mm. Tell me oh. they're really going to have Jaleel White do the voice again. Oh, nope. On. Hit a car. Thank you for the boost. Yeah. Everybody knows that the original Sonic cartoons were voiced by Steve Urkel, right? Mm-hmm. Hey, Rob, you think I get 200? Holy, Holy I'm, crap. I'm watching. I'm going to see how far the sardine can can go. Oh, so, the bus. with all the depressing news, I actually had something cool happen today. I was at Five Below, and I walked in, and of course you know that I have a slight obsession with Animal Crossing. It's one of my favorites. And every Animal Crossing amiibo they had there was buy one, get one free, so I got eight amiibo for 20 bucks. 
Nice. Spinning that hard. Which is a pretty good score. Oh, no. Five. I was 195. Damn. <laughs> and for everyone that doesn't shell out routinely for Nintendo shelf candy, usually Amiibo are about 12 bucks a pop. So eight of them for 20 bucks was real decent. There you go, Jay. I just did $4 million worth of damage in Burnout Paradise. Nice. So, just hearing you say Steve Urkel did the Sonic voice, it's like, who did Link's voice in Legend of Zelda cartoon? Well, excuse me, princess. <laughs> yeah, Jonathan Potts. Oh, believe it or not, my son got into the old Mario cartoons. I have some of those on DVD, and I have the entire Legend of Zelda series. They, um, they had it on Netflix for a little bit. Oh, yeah, I remember uh, that. Let's see. But, yeah, the Sonic looks... Uh, and apparently, like, there's going to be, like, a, a shoe coming out, too. <laughs> for us, that's, uh, like, Sonic sneakers. By of Nike. course, Anybody because they got to do it. No, no Nike. one asked for any of this. I think it's Nike, too. <laughs> and it's going to be as bad... If not slightly better as Captain Marvel. Do you know what Sonic game I would actually like to see? You remember when they were making all the Sonic spin-off series? Yeah. And they had Sonic Underground, which was... So you had Sonic, Sonya, and I think it was Radix, and they were siblings, and they had been split up, and they had to rescue the whole kingdom. I think that would have made a cool game, and of course we ignore that one because that one was actually kind of a cool series. So it got canceled halfway through, and we're like, let's not do anything. Yeah, I do not remember that at all. I know what you're talking about it because was they had really... all that stuff on four kids and stuff like that. They had magic medallions that would transform in into instruments, and Sonic Underground was actually an underground band that would play. And their instruments were oh, also magical. That. Oh my god, yes. Would that not have made a halfway decent video game? I just remember could, the Dreamcast one. Do you think they could have tied that into like Guitar Hero? Oh sweet Jesus, that would have been amazing. <laughs> <laughs> DLC would be pretty cool. Yeah, play as the Sonic Band. Yep. Or play as the Sonic band, but all right, this section is a platformer like old school Sonic, and now you got to plug it in your guitar and do the rhythm section. Kind of like that person that beat Dark Souls with a guitar. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. You can have one person playing with the guitar and the other person in the back with the Donkey Kong bongos. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> oh, but yeah, this Sonic needs to go burn in hell. We could do an entire show just on weird ass peripherals for video games. We in could fact, do an entire it, show on weird ass cartoons we saw. <laughs> in fact, if anybody wants to watch a weird ass show, I'll throw it out there. Angry Video Game Nerd has like three episodes just devoted to weird ass peripherals for video games. One of them is nothing but Nintendo. Because, oh my god, Nintendo had their standard of seal of approval on video games. But the third-party extras that came out for it, they did not care. Anybody could make anything. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to bring it back just a little bit. Remember me talking about the toys for kids and all that for their birthday? Another yep. thing, you guys, if you ever get a chance, and I'm not going to say this for younger than eight years old, because it does have a lot of math, but D and D with your kids is oh yeah freaking amazing, and it's one of the great ways to keep them. You know, like they got the math skills, they got the problem solving skills, all that stuff. They don't need deodorant yet. <laughs> they don't need deodorant also, yet, and that's a huge plus. I want to throw a big congratulations to Mike for pissing off anybody that might have been an evangelical that was listening to our show. There they go. Bye bye, guys. We'll miss you. <laughs> Well, we didn't really want you anyway, but okay. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I did actually grow up down south before I moved to New York. 
And there, there were legit campaigns. Like people ran on political campaigns of eradicating the threat that was D and D. Oh God! But no, Those like Bible Belt serious, Bible thumpers. Oh Jesus! <laughs> seriously, nowadays and like with that Critical Role animated thing, it's huge. D and D is now going into the mainstream, and hey, get your kids to play. It's great for them. Even if you don't want to do D and D, grab a GURPS book. That, for those of you who don't know, GURPS is generic universal role play setup, and it'll let you run fantasy, sci-fi. You can literally take your kids' old toys, action figures, write up stats and characters for them, and go to town with a GURPS book. It's a lot of fun. Well, not just that. That there's so many different systems. There's a Star Wars system. There's a Lord of the Rings system. Legend of the Five Rings, Warhammer. There's so many different systems. There's probably that... a system for like superheroes too. There yeah. is. Uh, well, there's like Marvel and Mutants. There's oh, there's so much stuff. And Anybody all of it... that plays fantasy games on the computer or the Xbox or whatever, ninety percent of that is actually based on dice rolls and Dungeons and Dragons rolls. When you exactly. do an attack and it tells you you got a critical attack. Literally, the computer rolled a die and calculated the odds of you getting a critical attack. It runs on dice rolls. It's You don't realize it because the computer's doing it. It's not you sitting there with the math, but basically we owe D&D for every good Skyrim or right. fantasy RPG that we're playing right now is all based exactly. on... Exactly. And with, with all that being said, uh, Gary Gygax's birthday just passed recently, so... And Gary Khan started today. So, oh, nice. Hmm. Yeah. But if you have the opportunity and your kid, it really, it doesn't matter anything about your kid. If you want them to get interested in something like that, just throw them in a game in D&D with you. Get your wife or your significant other to play and maybe some other kids, like their if friends. You do, if you do pre-made characters... Pretty much reading age, so say six to seven, you can start them out if you make the characters for everybody in the group. And run well, the, the, reason, the reason I say eight is because there is some multiplication that might need to be done. Yeah. And that's around the age where that starts. But it's, one, it is a therapist, like psychiatric approved activity. So if there's anything your kid is going through... It'll help bring it out so that you can help deal with it. Teachers, especially math teachers and English teachers, love it. Um, it's problem solving on top of that. Plus, you get their imagination going. You don't know yep. what your kid will come up with. I so, was going to say, the imagination with kids, is so key. Yeah. Uh, I'm over here just waiting for my kid to be old enough to play Warhammer with me. Oh. <laughs> And blood actually, for the blood god. I, I know it's really hard to find anymore, but if you want to get into Baby Steps D&D, when it came out, I bought almost every set, and I still have it. There was a system called Heroescapes. You actually built 3D maps with um, octagonal yep. Tiles. pieces. Yep. yep. So instead of a paper map with elevations written, you actually had a 3D map, but it ran the same rules as D&D. In fact, D&D well, that- actually came out with an expansion set for it. Yeah, and not just that, that there are children's book now called uh, ABD, ABCs of D&D and stuff like that. So nice. it's actual children books you can go get now. and yeah. I also recommend C is for Cthulhu. Yeah, C is for Cthulhu. <laughs> Dude, what? Because I'm weird like that. There's a book called C is for Cthulhu. Gotcha. Now, I'm you like... got to be into Lovecraft to get it, but... I'm just trying to figure out what the hell happened to my game here. Apparently, I got everything unlocked, and I did it. I don't know. Speaking of Lovecraft, this <laughs> actually brought me back to a conversation I was having, and it, it ties into your how much is enough for contrition. The fact of the matter is, everybody that creates something is not going to be a person that you like. I like exactly. book writers that are racist, or have made horribly sexist comments in the media. And I've had to sit down and be like, well, do I still like their stuff? And finally what I came to is 
them being kind of a scummy person does not take away the artistic merit of what they've created. Oh, yeah. I mean, so look, at it look, like that. look at Roald Dahl. He was a huge anti-Semite. Oh, God, yes. But his books were amazing. I mean, you got James and the Giant Peach, BFG. They are literal books that are taught in schools. Matilda, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I've read All pretty much everything the man's written. Yeah, exactly. But and to be fair, Michael... he, he left his views mostly out of his books. Oh, yeah. And Michael Crichton, he did Jurassic Park, Prey, the Andromeda Strain, all that stuff. He was for ethnic cleansing. Yep. But you will never see any of that mentioned in Jurassic Park. Mm. <laughs> okay, the all female you know, it, dinosaurs, the all female dinosaurs is a little bit suspect, but shut up. <laughs> he just wanted to get it on with Russell after. That's my, my reasoning. But I, I, I'm just saying, you can be pissed off because a mistake was made and somebody was either dumb enough to get trolled so you think they should be punished or whatever. But at the end of the day, you have to weigh the artistic merit of the product being made against the person that you're pissed off at. And sometimes the person's not always going to come out ahead. There, there are some amazing writers that are long gone. H.P. Lovecraft was racist as all get out, but I'll be honest, I love his horror. He wrote some of the best horror out there, some of the best suspense stories, but I'm not saying I would want to go have dinner with him if he was still alive. <laughs> I mean, shit, J.K. Rowling keeps retconning her own damn books. Ugh. Right? All the fit agendas. Idiot. Yeah. Oh, yeah, is Dumbledore still gay this week? Uh... <laughs> I think Hermione is, but then again, she's supposed to be black too. No, yeah, that was her big. Uh, that was her big bullshit spiel. Did you see that yeah. somebody immediately retweeted with the um, with a picture of the of the book where it said it mentioned her white cheeks. Mm -hmm. Yep, <laughs> and she was nothing to say about that. Uh, uh, right. uh. But almost, yeah, uh, like the other day, like, um, like, uh, was it when I was looking up what uh, movies to watch, which don't watch the, the <laughs> modern Robin Hood, bow, bow crap, yeah, that thing again. Um, I didn't know that the second uh, Fantastic Beast ever came out. <laughs> Is it like that stuff just died down again? No, oh, yeah. it, it went away from the title of Fantastic Beast 2. They're making it more about Grindelwald because they realized that there was more interest in that direction. So it's Fantastic Beast, the crimes of Grindelwald. So if you're not, not paying real good attention, you wouldn't even realize it's in the same series. Like, well, it's in the Harry Potter universe, but well, I think at this also, point, I don't think it has anything to do with the original movie. I think also, I don't have to worry about it anymore because... I'm divorcing it. <laughs> I did my Harry Potter thing. It was good. It was enjoyable. The movies were decent. The books were fun to read. I'm past Ugh. the age where it's actually interesting to me anymore. So Every her expanding time. her universe, I just don't care. Every time that we're at uh, her parents' house and the Harry Potter marathon's going on. Oh, God. Every time. But then again, okay. I also got her huge into Lord of the Rings, so it's okay. Can, can you quote all the movies yet? Yes. And to be fair, Lord of the Rings had its problems too because my ass went numb watching that third one. Hey, hey here's a general... <laughs> I respect him for not splitting it into two parts to rake more money, but my ass went numb in that seat watching that movie in the theater. Here's a little dad advice for you. If you're dating a a woman that doesn't like the Matrix, get the fuck out. Because <laughs> <laughs> my last two relationships is like, no. And then the first one, the first one's like, she hates Christian Bane as an actor. Okay, yep, gone. Her opinion is false. I once uh, broke up with a girl who proudly told me that she hated reading and the only thing she ever read was Twilight. Oh, I was like, we're done. We are done. There is nothing <laughs> I can discuss with you. 
this is not worth it and that's god like, forbid i procreate with you we're done that's <laughs> like going to like the going on the crapper and reading the back of the old spice bottle <laughs> there's nothing exactly. there for you exactly i got to i got to give it to my wife though this last weekend she went through the entire maze runner movies Ooh, all by that. herself I don't know. I haven't watched him, and I was kind of jealous because I wanted to see him. Bear beat. Um, I mean, I, I enjoy reading. I'm, I'm a huge book nerd, just like Mike. And the truth is, I've read Young Adult a lot more than you would expect because one of my first jobs was as the teen program coordinator at the public library in my town. Well, if I'm going to hang out with and spend time and do programs with teens, I kind of have to read the same shit they read. Yeah. Twilight was Drek, and I hated it. Hunger Games was pretty fun to read, although it really didn't translate that well into a movie, since 90% of the book is Katniss thinking, and you can't do that in a movie. Yeah, no can. one thought that one through. It's called Fight Club. <laughs> okay, and Fight Club is the only one that's done it right so far. <clears throat> but, I mean, <laughs> I've, read, I've read a lot of the young adult stuff. I... I went, watched it go through the vampire and monster phase, the dystopia phase, and there's really good and bad books in every single one of those phases. Mm -hmm. um, the Maze Runner books, I never got a chance to read. I was getting out, but the... Um, what was Divergent? the one with the... Yeah, that's it. I was going to say the dystopian society with all the different clans. That one yep, was Divergent. actually a pretty cool concept. It um, did not I follow through after the first book. See, and I only uh, got through the first book before I left the library, and the first movie was pretty much nothing like the book, so I'm like, okay, we're done with this. Well, the one thing <laughs> that I wish they would go back to and make more movies of is uh, the number series. I am number four. Yeah, oh, and it did such yep. poor box office ratings, they said they were done with it. Yeah, I don't read books, so I want to know what happened. <laughs> well, the another reason... I'm ha glad we're having this subject. Is March is reading month in my son's school? I'm not sure about your guys's. I think but it's we, pretty much across the states. Yeah, we are reading Redwall. And so if you haven't Dr. heard about Seuss's birthday this month, yep. Uh, Redwall is pretty much the dragon wants with mice and other free critters yep and it is very cool and honestly i think it's older than all three of us so it is like combined probably predecessor go the fuck to bed <laughs> my logic's too no it, uh no. brock jocks brian actually wrote these way back when and he does a bunch of other stuff like the flying dutchman and stuff like that um it's pretty much mice are these societal society and they team up with other furry critters the rats are the evil ones and Think lord of the rings with critters yeah pretty much and he's loving it we're probably i'm probably gonna have to get him back to bed here because he's been up this whole time so i'm probably gonna go read to him now but it's half hour reading a day and it's like it's one of those easy books you can get kids into because it's so creative. And I'm sure Jacques Bryan wasn't without his faults either. And if you ever liked Secret of Nim, that's pretty much the oh, alley God. you're running up. Less science, less sadness, but basically the same concept in terms of the anthropomorphic animal. Yeah. Secret of and Nim was fucking scary, though. Do you know what series redeemed itself? The um, Chris, I think it was Cassandra Clare, The City of Bones, and all that. They tried to make it into a movie. The movie sucked, and then they made Shadow Hunters, which I understand is a fantastic freaking series. It's a lot closer to the books than the movie ever came. I haven't seen it. Just but yeah, as John John keeps pointing out, we are at time. Just don't yes, we don't are. get wrapped up in the Umbrella Academy. Yeah, I, I heard that was yet. a very let down ending. Well, do you know the basis of it? Is no, no. You know who made it? No. no. It is the lead singer of My Chemical Romance. 
You think I'm, well, I'm joking? That pretty well, much just made me lose any interest I might have had in it. Thank you. I I actually believe you. Yeah, it's yeah, I, it's comics. It's superhero comics made by the lead singer of My Chemical Romance. Huh. That's so emo. I want to take stock in razor blade companies right now. Harry's, <laughs> Harry's razor blades. Just saying. But, well, anyway, with that, everyone, that is another episode of Dad. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, the whatever thing. show we're doing. <laughs> that thing we're Dad doing. Dad likes uh. gaming. And if for anybody that we offended, we might possibly be sorry, depending on the reason we offended you. Most of us are in a very weird mood and had long, weird days, so it's not always like this, but it's always interesting. <laughs> yeah, my kid had a half day of school, and it's been something else. I, get, I got my kid for the weekend. Actually, plus... He's on spring break, so I give him for an extra three days. Epic, man. That's awesome. So we're going to be... We did the jump center today, and we're going to go have fun this week, whole weekend. And, uh, yeah, like, pretty much, like, the only time I'm not going to spend with him is when he's in, like, in bed, and I'll be streaming. And that is fantastic. You enjoy your time, man. Oh, yeah. All right, but from everyone here at Dodd Life Gaming, peace out. Bye.